hey guys welcome back to this african perspective thank you for stopping by okay so today the videos we're going to be checking out from tiktok is videos about the economic crash a lot of people are expecting like an economic collapse in 2024 which is something i think we know that there are a lot of content creators that you know most times every time there's going to be a new year there's like different type of content that they make different type of topics that they talk about which is kind of which gives people a little bit of fear a lot of fear let me not even demean it and make them worried about the next year but this situation is kind of different because you know we've been through it since 2023 we've, we've seen a lot of us have seen hell while some of us haven't seen hell but many of us have seen hell so um but me personally i am not a finance guru i am not um a stock market guru so i'm not going to sit here and, and start blabbing my mouth and saying all sort of things that i know, have no idea about but the videos we're going to be checking about checking out are people who are talking about their prediction they did this by the end of 2023 they were talking about their prediction about how the economy is going to be in 2024 how bad it's going to be and yeah like we've already been through it we are in uh we've been through bad situations right so we've seen a lot of increase in poverty we've seen how the job market has become more bad we've seen how most of the time the money that we have in our hands are not really highly valuable because we can't even buy much with them so these are the videos that we're going to be checking out and before we get right into this video i please i really appreciate if you click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new here you're watching me for the first time and hit the notification bell to get notified every time i post a new video let's get right into it if you don't want to do it right now maybe because you don't trust you will like this video then you can do it in the middle of the video when you like it okay i really appreciate it it helps with the algorithm do you know what do you think is going to happen with the market and the economy if next anyone year? if anyone says that they know uh no one knows okay it's one thing i always say in the market is the market's going to tell you what it's going to do so economy wise okay the market is in the economy okay so let's break it out okay there's differences that's happening in the market like you know they say wall street main street right mm -hmm. wall street isn't main street main street isn't wall street right from a market perspective, the market's been going freaking crazy for the last, let's look at the NASDAQ, right? It's been going up, which is ridiculous. Um, it's never seen this much of an uptrend on all different indices for this sustained amount of time. So obviously it's going to consolidate. Whether it's going to, now the question is what happens to the economy will affect how, what affects the market in terms of how, much down is it going to go is when we say it's going to consolidate is this going to go like eh, 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 like that mm -hmm. right from a market perspective i think there's going to be a pullback there has to be a pullback on all indices it's just been going through a crazy run santa claus rally right but for the economy it's hard to say because you got inflation coming down right um now again this is infl it's, it's a reduction in inflation. It's disinflation, not deflation. Okay, two different things. So if there's disinflation, prices are coming down, gas prices came down. No doubt, things are still expensive. Okay, but here's the kicker to what I see. All the estimates from corporations is positive going in, which tells me what, right? You're not going to see your prices coming down. The prices may not be increasing the way it has been the last year, year and a half, but it may be stabilizing, but forget about it coming down. So that means mm -hmm. what? That means Main Street. That means consumers, everyone, they're still going to pay high prices for stuff, except the prices are not going to be inflating month over month, quarter over quarter, right? So things are still going to be relatively expensive. Why? The wage growth has slowed down. So your salaries, the money you make, isn't more, hasn't caught up with the, the prices yet. So things are gonna still feel expensive. But when corporations say their earnings are still gonna be good, they're thinking there's not gonna be a slowdown. Is there gonna be a slowdown, a recession? Jobs are contracting, but they're not negative. Job losses are up, but they're not to a point where unemployment is rising. So I think the key question is, you know, how does everybody feel? Are you, is everybody scared about losing their jobs? What's, what's their situation, right? So as long as we don't lose jobs, 
in an accelerated way, the economy is going to become what they call, what you hear is a soft landing. A hard landing means recession, you know, and it's just nomenclature. It's just like what people say, right? What you got to watch out for is the next jobs report. Now, inflation, we know, is coming down. Again, not deflation, but disinflation. The rate of prices increasing is, is the, 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 the graph is flattening, right? Uh, interest rates are coming down. So here's the other big thing, right? The Fed says they forecast three rate cuts for the year. Now, obviously, the market's crazy thinking the first one's going to come in January or March. I don't see that because what people need to understand is all the people cheering for rates coming down, if the rates drop steeply, what does that mean? That means you've got job losses. That means what? Recession's coming. How can that be a good thing? So it's kind of funky right now. It looks like, it looks like the data looks like they've pulled it off. That means they were able to slow the economy down, slow down GDP, which is the forecast for next year, quarter to quarter, but not create this dip where jobs start lose, you people start losing jobs. And then once you start losing jobs, it's like a, you know, it's like a snowball effect. You don't, you can't pull that back really quickly. I think what the Fed has to do is they're worried that might happen, right? So they may start dropping rates to, soften that blow but i don't know you hear both sides from all sorts of people all sorts of smart people out there we don't know I, it could get it looks like it's slowing down to me it's going to slow down but you hope that it's not going to cost people a lot of job losses where the fed has to really dip, bring the rates down because for all the people in the market if the fed starts dropping rates that means the economy slowing down and believe me it's not good for the market either so that's what i think Kind of complicated. Got it. This is how I know that a recession is around the corner. Federal Reserve says they don't see a recession until at least 2027. Remember, these are the same people in 2020 who said that interest rates would remain low until 2024. And we're not even at 2024 yet. And we've just experienced the most aggressive tightening cycle in the last 40 years. Looking at Bitcoin, we also got a sell signal on the weekly here. Now, obviously, no indicator is perfect, and I don't go off of one indicator alone, but it's definitely something to be considered as the last two sell signals were pretty, uh, pretty legit. Here's what we know about the recession coming in 2024. According to Statista, there's up to a 70% chance of a recession in early 2024. If we do get a recession, economic activity is going to be down, consumer spending is going to be down, unemployment is going to rise. This is all because the Federal Reserve has been increasing interest rates almost nonstop over the past two years to cool down the economy and fight inflation. So that must mean the stock market is going to crash too, right? You can see that during recessions, the stock market actually does pretty well. I mean, in some cases, you could see negative 37% in 2007. But apart from that, the other recessions haven't really been bad. And it's really the six months before, the 12 months before a recession, where you usually see those negative returns like nine times out of 10. However, in the six months, 12 months, and two years after a recession, more likely than not, the stock market is up and in many cases up by a lot. So after looking at the data, it might not be as bad as people think, and there might not even be a recession still. Some people like Goldman Sachs believe that the chances of recession are actually down to 15%, not 70%. There's been some fear in the stock market lately, but it's still up a lot this year. And I think in the long term, it's a great time to be buying. Let me know your thoughts and follow stock dads for more stock market. I don't understand why they keep talking about this going to be a recession in 2024. I'm happy to see that a lot of people are co-signing with me in this situation. Yes, this recession, I thought is something that we've been, am I the only one who, from you guys that are watching it, you guys should let me know. Am I the only one who thinks that we've been in a recession? but they just don't want to admit it and put it on paypal or put it on the mainstream news that oh you know we've been in a recession we've been through it all but they claim that oh no we have not been in a recession but we might be in a recession we are going to be in a recession in 2024 that's what different people are saying and i'm like wait i thought we we have been in a recession so just because you don't say it on mainstream news you think we are actually not going through it it's crazy because i thought we were going through it but maybe we are not maybe i'm just the crazy one who just doesn't understand that that is the, what we have been through this year they're gonna pop the biggest financial bubble in all of history 
and I think I know why. Let's start by talking to our good buddy, Fred. If you don't know, Fred is the official website from the Federal Reserve where they publish all kinds of official economic data. And Fred can tell you a lot of things. Like for example, that US GDP, the total value of all the stuff that the US makes that's real, is going up slowly. And that US debt is skyrocketing. This is not news to anyone that has eyes. I mean, we've all seen the meme of Jerome Powell and his money printer by now. No matter how you slice it, money's just getting printed. They measure the total money in the system in different ways. They call them M1, M2, M3. M1 is a particularly cute chart. M2 includes more theoretical money that's just numbers in other screens. And so that spike in 2020 is not quite as intense because it has more factors involved. But no matter what you look at, the money supply is going to the moon. But you know what else is going to the moon? Derivatives exposure. Again, GDP is on this chart in green because it's not changing at all, really, while derivatives are skyrocketing. Derivative is the financial term for like placing bets that are just arbitrary that we make up ourselves, not like buying a stock and the stock's value goes up because the company's value goes up. Derivatives are people in the financial institutions or just you and me making bets based upon other things. Like I bet JP Morgan stock will be worth this much more on that day. Uh, I'll put a thousand dollars on it, which sounds legit because it's, you know, people make bets, but it allows for huge amounts of leverage in the system. Because JP Morgan stock might go up by a dollar, but we might have bets that mean that that changes our bets by hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Although in the real world, we're talking millions and billions of dollars. It's an extremely complex topic, but just so you know what we're talking about here, the top three financial institutions in the United States are currently sitting on $50 trillion worth of derivative bets each. This chart is in millions of dollars. So 49 million million is $49 trillion. And if you notice their assets column, Goldman Sachs is sitting on $47 trillion of derivatives and they don't even have half a trillion dollars of actual assets to back up all those bets. Cause you know, when you make a bet, the other side is like, okay, but how do I know you're good for it? And you're like, well, check out my nice car. Right, like the car is your asset that backs up the money that you're promising to pay. So yeah, they're sitting on 100 to one leverage right there. And a lot of economists have termed this the everything bubble for good reason. Because as all this money got pumped into the system, it skyrocketed the value of stocks, just all stocks, cryptocurrencies, you name it. But we've also seen huge rises in things like mortgage-backed securities. This is since 2010, you know, these are the things that caused the 2008 housing collapse. Yeah, they're on the up. Oh, and so are student loan asset backed securities. A security is like a slice of pie where you like put a whole bunch of debts or a whole bunch of things into a pool and you slice it up into little slices and then you sell pieces of it as investments. Like, you know, a company gets sliced up and they sell shares of the company as stocks. Those are securities. So student loan asset backed securities means when they take everyone's student loans, put them all that debt into a big pool, then they slice it up into little slices and then they sell those slices as securities so you can make money off of collective student loan debt. Well, let's be real. You can't make money off of it because you don't know how to do this, but they make money off of it. I think this chart shows the phenomenon a little bit more clearly because it's a new thing. This is what we call financial innovation, folks. Oh, but they're also doing it to your car loans too, obviously, which are at record highs right now. But also consumer credit card debt is also at record highs. And you all already know this shit. We all know that we're fucked. But the point is that right now, everything's fucked all at once. And the stock market's insane pump over the last decade or two. And a huge amount of that value in the market is actually just derivative value of made up money of bets propping everything up with fake money that's not actually real, just making everything look like it's really valuable. Because in the financial world, if everyone's making side bets on Apple going up, that increases Apple's value because everyone's hyped. Apple stock goes up, everyone gets more hyped, they make more side bets that Apple stock will go up. You see what I'm saying there? Just if you hadn't looked closely and read yet, that line says 600 trillion. But some estimates put derivative exposure in the quadrillions, which is a stupid number. And I phrase it that way because we don't actually know the size of the market because over-the-counter derivatives are not regulated and they have very lenient reporting standards, thanks to a certain guy that we'll talk about in a second. And all of this has been carefully executed by a small set of 
financial executives and power people who love to act like they don't understand the basics of inflation and the economy, and they just could never have predicted the situation that we find ourselves in, but have convenient resumes of being total stooges for the Federal Reserve, despite now working for the government, because those two organizations are not, or the chair of the Fed, who is the master of, I didn't know it was going to, I just didn't know printing money would cause inflation. Because I'm sure Jerome Powell did not understand the most basic facts about how money works when George H.W. Bush named him Undersecretary of the Treasury in 1992. So to clarify, he went from the private sector working for investment banks to the public sector working for the government, back to the private sector working for the Carlyle Group during the Iraq War. There's no rabbit hole to be done on that whole can of shit. And now back to the public sector in charge of the Federal Reserve. Or is that the private sector? I'm not really clear on that one. And then, of course, the guy that's in charge of regulating the whole thing, Gary Gensler, the chair of the Securities Exchange Commission, which is like the financial regulatory institution of the United States. Well, he worked at Goldman Sachs for 18 years before taking the little revolving door into the government, where he's worked for Goldman Sachs ever since, to be clear. But back in the turn of the century, Gensler worked with Lawrence Summers to push for passing the Commodity Futures Modernization Act, which exempted over-the-counter derivatives from regulation. You know... These over-the-counter derivatives that are currently worth hundreds of trillions of dollars of unchecked Lord knows what kind of leverage. He also did a stellar job of specifically failing to regulate the crypto industry in very suspect looking ways, going after every legitimate actor except for the dude that broke everything, who totally didn't have weird ties to like, never mind. In case you didn't know, in the build up to 2008, the big boys knew what was coming because they were the ones inflating that bubble and they popped it at a very specific time with very specific actions. And they timed it very specifically to bring in our Lord and savior, Barack Obama, who promised to regulate the banks. And that did not go well. And today the situation is 10 times worse and the whole world is 10 times as fucked. And throughout all of history, there's only one thing that solves major economic crises on a global scale. But this time, a global war isn't enough to fix it because it's not just a global economic crisis, it's a currency collapse. And all throughout history, a currency collapse leads to the rise of a new currency. And who have you heard talking an awful lot over the last year about introducing a new kind of currency that's gonna make the world a much better place? And if we're being honest, it's looking more and more like in 2024, they're either going to let Trump win or do something really shady to make the election not happen. Because they're actually trying to run 80 whatever year old Biden against him. And what better time to pop the largest financial bubble in all of human history than right before you let Trump have office again? Just think about it. Ooh, this guy's talking about the financial collapse of 2024. Get that out of your head. My followers have been tagging me like crazy in this guy's video because he's talking about the popping of the everything bubble. Let me just dissect this piece by piece. First, the guy talks about the derivatives market and how its total value is $715 trillion, which is much more than the total GDP of the entire world. He gave a good definition on what a derivative is and then he just failed completely after that point. First, derivatives are not an asset or a liability. They are contracts. Second of all, that $715 trillion is the notional value. It is not the actual market value. The actual market value of all derivatives is closer to like 18.3, probably $20 trillion right now. It's still a big number, but it's not something that can crush the value of the dollar or sink the world financial markets. And this guy did you a huge disservice by not explaining the difference between the two. Now let's talk about that nonsense he said about the everything bubble about to collapse and the crushing of the US dollar. The everything bubble already popped in 2022 and we are dealing with the negative effects of it now. This article is from last year. Do you know what happened to the dollar when that everything bubble collapsed? It freaking skyrocketed. This is the DXY which measures the strength of the dollar. When bubbles 
pop, the value of the dollar skyrockets because the entire world flocks to it like a safe haven. And of course, regular people don't benefit from that because one thing that they don't have when bubbles burst is dollars. Right now, the strength of the dollar is at 102 on the DXY, which means that the dollar is very strong right now. When the everything bubble popped in 2022, it shot up to 115. So anyone sitting on a big pile of dollars was very happy. Another thing that skyrockets in value whenever there's a huge bubble burst is the price of oil. And as you could see in 2022, it shot up from about what, 65 to 123 bucks per barrel. Let's look at the standard and poor. In 2022, at the very beginning, it was trading at the level it is now. The bubble burst shot all the way down to 350, which means the S&P 500 just caught up to where it was two years ago. Now let's talk about all that debt he was freaking out about and the securitization of that debt. Right now, the grand total of student loans is about $1.8 trillion. Total auto loans are at about $1.6 trillion. Now, there are delinquencies in student loans and auto loans. No disagreement there. Those types of loans don't guide market crashes. It's home loans. It's when mortgages are in default. And right now, the entire balance of all mortgages in the U.S. is about $12.14 trillion. This chart is the delinquency rate for single-family homes. And as you can see, it shot up in 2008-2009 to almost 12%. We are only at 1.72%, which is pretty much record lows. In fact, delinquency rates for all loans are at their record lows, 1.33%. So that market's fine. Last but not least, let's talk about the entire US monetary supply, which went from almost $22 trillion to $20.7 trillion. And that drop from $22 trillion to $20.76 trillion almost broke the economy. The last time we had a drop in money supply that steep, that quickly, was during the Great Depression. You know what happened. You know why the money supply dropped like crazy? Because the Fed was raising interest rates and demolishing the everything bubble. When the Fed raises interest rates, banks are much less willing to loan money, and guess what? The money supply shrinks. And as long as we don't lower interest rates way too quickly and actually keep them high for, I don't know, at least a couple more years, then the money supply will level off into a more reasonable number. Now, my guy, I'm sure you meant well and you just wanted to issue a warning, but you've made it very clear that you don't have an understanding of the material that you are discussing. Discussing. I have a degree in mathematics, I have a master's in statistics, and another degree in economics. And those degrees don't really mean anything if I don't back them up with reading economic journals every single day, going over statistics every single day on this subject matter alone. Long story short, I don't think everything's hunky-dory, but I think we are slowly pulling ourselves out of this mess. Of course, if we do something very, very stupid, we could sink right back into the thick of it. I'm the Geo Hussar. I like talking about statistics, mathematics, economics, and world events. If you found this post useful, please. Different type of um, perspective on all these type of topics, about prediction, what people think another year, like a year is going to bring. And we all know that a lot of us, like we hope for the better of economy and we're hoping that something will change. But sometimes like there's a way you look at some things and you'll be like, mm, maybe this is not gonna be good. We don't know where we're heading to. But I mean, I am not a guru. I am not a specialist with uh, economics, all these type of things. But I did see a lot of people's comments, which made me, I, I found it funny because I think many people have given up. Like there are a lot of people who have given up on all this, you know, this type of fear, fearful, scary content telling you that, oh my God, it's going to be horrible in the future. Oh my God, um, many of us are going to be dealing like many all this type of scary type of situation where they are predicting that many bad things are going to happen. I notice many people just have given up. They don't even have the strength or the time to even be scared because I'm going to be for real. I think every single year of my life. All I've heard a lot of the time is people telling me that the next year is going to be horrible. Um, for those people who are even religious, where they tell you that the world is going to end. Next year, the world is going to end. Another year, there's going to be war. Another year, there's going to be this. So it just makes a person just get tired of hearing all those things all the time. And yeah, let me get back to what I was saying. So many people, I saw them saying that they don't really care like they don't even have the strength to be fighting they tell them oh you guys should go and fill in food in your bunkers you guys should make sure that you have a lot of preserved food food that are going to last you a long time because what if there's nothing out there and people are struggling and trying to survive you might need bullets because um 
and what you're gonna be needing is not money you need to stack up on bullets because you need to be fighting for your life or else people will be trying to come and steal stuff from you do different type of things and before you know it you won't even have enough ammo to actually protect yourself and people are like you know what like i don't care i mean we're gonna die someday anyway so they should just come and kill me i don't care like if, if death just comes let it just come because we've just been through too much hell to care I know there are a lot of people that do care for their life because I think this life we kind of have different type of people with different personalities There are those who are fighters some people will fight for their life They will protect their life by all means if they need any place that they need to go to to hide themselves secure themselves Make sure they are protected, but then there are people who can give up like easily one minute if you give them too much stress If you tell them they need to do so much, they'll be like, you know, what? like take me away let me go back to it take me away at this point I'm just sharing relatable content to you guys about the things that we kind of face on a daily basis especially when it comes to our finances right now so that is what is going on and i just wanted to share this content with you guys and i will be glad to hear what you guys think about this video you guys should let me know what are your thoughts on these videos and i'll see you guys on the next video well, before you go, I would need you guys to please click the like button, okay? Subscribe to the channel if you are new here and hit the notification bell to get notified every time I post a new video and leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye!